I'm gonna show you guys some before and afters of book covers that I have licensed. You're gonna see the image that I submitted and then the final cover that got released. Hi, I'm Vanessa. Welcome to my channel. I like to do self portraits, book cover photography, basically anything that's creative photography related that I can do all by myself because I'm really introverted. This video is actually like the first video where you probably won't need a notebook because you don't really have to take notes. There is going to be information, but not really anything that you need to jot down and remember. I am just basically showing you a selection of book covers that I've licensed images for so that you can get an idea of um, how much they will potentially change your image. So if you're excited to see these before and afters, hit that like button and let's get started. So this first image that I'm showing you is a photo that I took of myself with a tripod and a remote that I set up. I was at one of my favorite places in the world. I was out at Cultus Lake on a foggy, rainy, I think it was like February or something. And I love doing that in the off season. There's nobody there and it's very moody and it's perfect for book covers. So I actually really loved not just this image, but like all the images that I got that day. And I was really happy when this one got licensed. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this one first is this is an example of where they didn't really change anything at all. The photo's just been cropped in a little bit and I think they've changed the color just a touch to make it a little bit more saturated, but mostly this image has stayed the same. I really loved the font that they used for the title. I loved the placement. I bought this book and I actually read it and I actually liked the book as well. So that's always a bonus. If every single licensing that I did was an experience like this one, um, that would be amazing. This was the most ideal book cover for me um, because that's, that's what I like. Those are the types of books that I like. I just, it, it, it was just my favorite. So here's an image that I have shown you guys before in another video. I took a photo of myself and then I changed my clothes. I left my tripod in the same spot and everything. Changed my clothes like in my car and put a wig on, got out, took another photo of myself and then I photoshopped it together and I made it nighttime and I put all these fireflies in. It took me forever to get this one photo together. Um, and this one has actually been licensed twice. So in the other video, I showed you the final results of the image where they kept it the same mostly i'll show that again to you but this one this one was actually licensed by the same author as the last book that i just showed you but they did a pretty heavy edit on it because they just basically used the background they took me and me out completely and put a different person in and they changed the color a little bit to a more of a turquoise on the sky and made it a little bit more saturated. I still love this color. Like it looks a lot like the last one because it's by the same author. So I think that is really cool. It's just the main character of this book is not looking anything like me. So they took me out and they just kept the background. <laughs> Um, which I thought was pretty interesting, but that's one example of what they might do in an image. Here is the other time that that photo was licensed for a book cover, and you can tell that it was not as dra not as dramatically altered. This time they just added the the title and the author name and stuff. I'm showing you guys this image because I honestly don't even think that it's a really good image. It was taken when I was just starting and I is also one of those examples where I didn't take a whole bunch of photos. So this is like maybe one of three that I submitted with my red wig that I was wearing. Um, it's really soft. I don't like the focus. 
I didn't edit it very well, but I submitted it. It got accepted. It's one of the more higher paying images as well. I think I got a thousand dollars for this picture. And when I look at it now, I cringe because like technically, um, I'm not even a technical photographer. Like I really could care less about the, what settings you have. If you get the shot, if it looks good, that's all I really care about. But for myself, I don't think I would shoot this again. And if I did, I would probably delete it. <laughs> you know, that's where I started. So, and it worked and that, that kept me going, you know, that motivated me to keep growing. So in one of my videos talk about book covers, I talk about how I shoot in almost exclusively vertical format. This is an example of a time that I wasn't really shooting for book covers. I was just shooting my kids and it was again early on. So I hadn't started shooting just vertical. And this is just a picture I took of my son. He was sitting on the front steps and I, was walking past the front door and I thought he looked really cute so I took a couple photos and I ended up submitting them anyways um, even though it wasn't intentional and it's not something that I would have like if I had planned this there is a small detail that I would have changed and that his that is his shirt because on his shirt, it just looks like he's wearing camo, but it actually has um, the character Lightning McQueen on his shirt, which is like a no-no. You can't have like copyrighted characters and logos and stuff like that in your images. So I got away with it this time just because it is really subtle. But if I was planning this shot, it's something that I would have changed. And here is what they did with it. So even though it was a horizontal image, what they did is they just added in like the bottom porch area from another um, photograph and they turned it into a vertical image and made their own copy space. So if you have images that could work for book covers, but they're horizontal, but they could do something like this, still submit them, you never know. So there are a couple times that I have licensed an image and if I had never gotten the email about it and I saw it in the bookstore, I probably wouldn't even recognize it. And this usually happens the most with still life. I mean, obviously it's a lot easier to recognize myself or one of my children than it is to recognize an item. So if it has been cropped or altered in some sort of way, it's a lot harder for me to recognize that image is one of mine. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple examples of that. So here's this image that I took of dried flower petals that I arranged in the shape of a heart. It's got a little bird in the middle. And to me, I felt like it was kind of romantic and whimsical. And the cover that they ended up using it for is a thriller cover. So they have added a texture on it to give it a little bit more texture in the background. They changed the petals to a bright yellow and added a bit of a blood splatter to it. And even though it's essentially the same shape and everything, because of those changes, I probably wouldn't have noticed had I walked past it in a bookstore or in Walmart or something. So this image, I took a picture of a piece of paper on a board that is used for tracing for drawing so it's a backlight board and then what i did is i inverted it so the original image has a white background and the paper is shadowy but i did a whole series of these kind of x-ray-ish i tried to make them look kind of like an x-ray type still life where i would invert them and get something like this I absolutely never in a million years would have recognized my own little piece of paper on this image. They have added so much to this cover with the background and the tweezers and they changed the paper itself to look just like paper and not like it was inverted. So it's totally different, but it is actually my piece of paper. Here's an image of myself that I just copied the one side, flipped it, turned it over and put it again. I don't know, double faces are a thing on book covers. So I did a few of these and there's nothing particularly special about it. And I think that I am going to make a video about how I edit 
and the choices that I make in editing for book covers because that will explain a little bit more why it is what it is. The cover that this ended up going on was quite an extreme edit and even though they changed it a lot, I actually love it. I think I pre-ordered this. I don't think it's in, it's actually out yet. Did I pre-order this? I hope I did. Maybe I've been waiting for this book and I haven't actually ordered it. I'm gonna check as soon as I'm done recording this video. <laughs> this just looks cool. It's just cool. It's alien. The description of this book online, I'm pretty sure I pre-ordered this. I guess it must not be out yet or I don't know. But um, I like it. I like what they did with the eyeballs. I like the green. It's very cool. Um, I never would have edited it like this, but it's cool to see one of my images done like this. I don't really typically do sci-fi stuff. Even when I do like my more artsy kind of um, conceptual work, I tend to lean more into fantasy than sci-fi, but I do enjoy sci-fi, so I think this one's kind of cool. Okay, from this point on, I am going to be sharing with you guys some fails. <laughs> Not really fails, but they're probably my least favorite covers just because there's something done to them that is not my favorite. But, um, you know, it is what it is. This image has been licensed on, I think, three different covers. Um, one of them is the same book, but it's just in different countries. And one of them is a different book. And I think they really like this image just because the back of the frame is such a good spot for the title. It's got great copy space. That's interesting. And for two of the images, it was fine. It looked great and I loved it. And I actually have a copy of the North American release. And then there was this one, which at first glance looks totally fine. But if you look at it for any length of time, you'll realize that they changed the background to be yellow. And in doing so, they actually even painted yellow right over top of my legs. <laughs> so I don't know if it was a mistake or just laziness, but it seemed kind of weird to me. And it's not something that I would personally do to my image. But, you know, it is what it is. And I honestly, I think I, I notice it more than maybe anybody else would. I'm not sure if anybody would even notice that, but it is something that I picked up on. Here is one of my more conceptual images. And I have to say it's one of my least favorite conceptual images. I don't love this picture, but it was experimental. And I, you know, just wanted to play around with the idea of falling. I took pictures of myself jumping on a trampoline and that's how I got that pose. And the hand is just a plastic like Halloween prop that you're supposed to like stick in the garden. <laughs> so, you know, it's a little embarrassing. I don't love it, but it's whatever. So I submitted it and it actually got licensed. And it's not that the cover is like bad, okay? Like I like the color, I like the font, I like the idea, but I I do a lot of composites and I'm really kind of nitpicky and the angle of the staircase and the size of the staircase versus the angle that I'm falling at and the scale of my body as well as the lighting, which I didn't even notice at first, but I showed it to my daughter who's nine. And that's one of the things that she pointed out is that the lighting on the staircase and the lighting on my body was different. So I think the average person who looks at this would probably not really notice those little details and cringe. But because it's something that I work with all the time and I'm constantly trying to make my composites like my co my composites believable and look good um, to me to my eye I'm like ah <laughs> overall um, the mood and the tone of this I think it is good and um, I've saved my absolute least favorite book cover ever for last. So this is the image that got licensed for my absolute least favorite book cover. Um, as you can tell, my kids are quite young there. So it was at the very beginning. 
of my book cover, my time is shooting for book covers. It was during a time that I was editing a lot heavier. There's a lot of things that I wouldn't do now, like adding the kind of scratchy texture on it. Um, I don't submit a lot of black and whites. Again, I'll talk more in depth on that in a video that I'm going to make in the future about how I edit for book covers, but this isn't something that I would, I would take this picture, I just wouldn't edit it like this. Here is that image on the cover that I got licensed for. This cover was, I think, the second cover that I licensed through Archangel. I was still very new at it and I, was kind of in that zone where I didn't like people altering my images. I felt like I put a lot of time into my edit, as you could tell. <laughs> and so when it got like put together with these other images, I didn't feel like it fit very well. I didn't like the font and the color of the title. And I, it was probably the first and maybe the only time that I was not happy and I remember thinking like I got I got very little for this I think I got like $90 for this this cover licensing um and I remember thinking like I would pay them $90 to take it off <laughs> it's kind of harsh but um that's just I was just being really overly idealistic about my images at the time and what it all meant to submit covers it doesn't bother me now. I think that it was a reality check that I'm glad I had right at the beginning to learn like, hey, you don't get control. If you're doing this, it is what it is. And so I definitely learned from this and it just makes me laugh now because, uh, not because of the cover, but because of how I reacted at the time, looking back, I just kind of laugh at my, my reaction and how I felt about it. So that's just a small selection of some book covers that I've licensed over the years. I tried to pick the most interesting ones, my favorite, my least favorite, and give you guys like a sense of how little or how much something could get changed when it gets licensed for a cover. If you haven't already, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you haven't caught up already, I will have a whole playlist um, on the end screen ready for you to watch and catch up on all my previous book cover photography videos. Of the covers that I showed you, I would love to know which one was your favorite and which one was your least favorite. So leave that below. Um, I'm really interested to see what you guys have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.